This is the top of the unit. There are three screws that need to be removed. I've already removed them, but you want to remove this screw, this screw, and that screw to take off the front. Leave this screw in place right there. Similarly, we need to remove three screws. They are this one, the one in the center, and the one on the outside. So two on the outside, one in the center. The other four screws here, you want to leave in place. The last thing you want to do is you want to remove this connector right here from the front of the unit. Um, I've just got it hand tightened right now. You'll want to torque it down correctly when you finish your repair. That will just take that off right there. And then you're going to want to pull it straight out. You can do that by this knob and the little ESD pin right here generally. Usually works. So you take it out and then you're going to want to rotate it down. Um, Next thing we're going to do is remove the display. We can do that by removing the connector there, removing two connectors here. One of them is as if you need to slide that out and then you can slide that out. Uh, this one comes straight up and then you need to remove the three screws right here. So you will be removing three or three screws here. Um, the three screws are the same regardless of whether you have the E or the ES unit. These are not original screws, but that's another story for another time. You'll rotate this unit up to the top, take that off, and this is the display for the 8753 ES. Um, you won't have this in your unit. So next we're going to take this display and we're going to take out the backlighting. All right, so this particular unit, you notice these little screws here and you notice this part around the outside. This backlight, by the way, is for the ES unit. The E unit is much more difficult to disassemble, but we're going to do this one for now. The one screw there. And we'll move the, remove the screw here in the corner. And then we do that with a little luck, those will pop out, which they did. And then I think just have to figure out which way things slide here. It's been too long. There we go. There's the snap. So um, snapped it that direction, obviously. Rotate it like this. And voila, and here we have the classic problem. Um, look at this, you see the light here, and you can kind of see the lamp here poking through, and then here you can't. Why can't you see it? Well, because the mylar has wrapped around the light bulb here. You can see that it's gotten too hot, it's just deformed, and it's wrapped all the way around there. Here on the bottom of it, same thing, you can see the mylar wrapping around here, wrapping around here, and what that means is that even if you're getting some light out of this, uh, we've got a third of it covered up here, a third of it covered up here, um, half of it covered up there. So you're losing about half the light just because it's covered up by the mylar, which has deformed over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the display here, and very gently wiggle these wires out here, and then we're going to do the same thing along this side. And being very gentle not to break things because it's just a bunch of plastic snaps and things in here. And once we get it all the way out here, let's put just a little bit of pressure there. Same thing in this corner. And voila, our lamp comes out. Now, we could replace this lamp and we may end up replacing this lamp. Uh, it's a little bit discolored here on that corner and that corner, which is not ideal. But we're going to start with just a mylar fix. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove these pieces of mylar here. Just pop them right out. And then we're going to get some pieces of aluminum foil that are in similar dimensions. We're going to pop those in there and we're going to see what sort of improvement we got. Now again, look at this mylar. This is supposed to be silver reflective. It is not silver, it is black as charcoal. So no reflection going on there. Um, in addition, it is curving around the lamp, keeping all the light in. So that's just what you get when you leave your machine on forever. Wherever this lamp came from, whichever machine this came from, somebody just left it on probably all the time. 
probably for I don't know how many thousands of hours. And so there goes the lamp. All right, I need to go get myself some aluminum foil. So I'm going to stop the tape, cut some pieces of aluminum foil that are roughly those dimensions of these two pieces here. And then I will show you how we insert them in here and here, um, how we put the lamp back in, how we put a few spacers in to hold the aluminum foil in place, and then we'll be in business. Welcome back. We've got our aluminum foil here. Here's the old pieces of mylar. You can see how black these are. Compare that with a shiny piece of aluminum foil, and you can see what difference we're hoping to achieve here. So, without further ado, let's set the mylar aside. We're going to take this, and we're going to form the aluminum foil, making sure we have the shiny side towards the lamp. We're going to use the lamp to form it very gently. Just going to put it on and bend it around roughly to the right shape. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, and then I'm going to use the tweezers here to kind of form it to the cavity. This is actually looking decent enough. Try and hold it with one finger and then use the tweezers along the sides. Kind of works. Not perfect, but not bad. All right, so I've got one in, and now I will do the long side. Same technique as before. Just going to bend it gently around the lamp here. Try to get it somewhat centered. Once we've got the basic form, I'm shove it here. I'm going to use the tweezers to get it all the way in. Get roughly the right spot. And now, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and put the lamp in. Um, as before, we've got to get these ends. And that kind of sort of worked. All right. So we've got it in there, we've got it basically with the aluminum foil around it. The last step for this, we're going to take these little bits of foam, they're probably hard to see, and we're going to shove them in the sides in a few select locations to make sure that we have the aluminum aligned exactly how we want it uh, in terms of position and things. We're going to position it so it's a few millimeters from the corner here. Um, we're going to try to make it so that the aluminum doesn't block any of the light. So we'll shove these down here in a way that kind of holds the aluminum in place and keeps it away from the lamp. The bits are going to create dark spots wherever I put them in because there is going to be a little bit less light there. But my hope is that by keeping the aluminum in place, the net effect will be positive. And I really don't want that aluminum floating around. So I've managed to get three in there on that side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick a couple around this bit as well just to keep things from moving around. I'm not sure that these foam bits are actually required, but I just hate the idea of aluminum floating around here when you have the high voltage and everything else going on. So it's complete now. Uh, again, I stuck three pieces of foam on that side, a couple on this side, 
possibly overkill. I'm going to form the aluminum just a little bit to make sure that it stays out of the way of that lamp and is reflecting everything as much as possible towards the backlight. So at this point, I think I've got it there. I think the aluminum is reflecting in the right direction. And the big thing is, in addition to reflecting, we no longer have the pieces of mylar that are that were physically wrapped around the lamp, keeping all the light from coming on. So we went from black and wrapped to not wrapped and reflective. Well, that's all there is to it. So let's go ahead and put this back together. Um, the first thing to do, of course, is to reassemble this. These wires just slide right back in place here like they were before. You just go from the ends and push them gently into the groove. You'll notice that, uh, like many parts of the network analyzer, this backlight is, in fact, groovy. And there we have it. Once they're in the grooves, you can go ahead and put this back in here. We uh, align it here, the various slots, and then we're going to push it gently towards the bottom. Oops, at the same time up there. Hopefully we didn't crack anything. And if all went according to plan, all we have to do is find our little two screws up here. And pop those back in place. And if it all works according to plan, then this should be ready to go. The display goes right here. Aligning it the two holes on this side, and then the two holes over there. Once that is in place, we can connect the display flex here. This white flex is infamous for causing problems. Most particularly the inverted display. Um, if you get an inverted display on one of these, chances are this connection has gone bad. You need to disconnect it and reconnect it three or four times, and that will solve your problem for perhaps a year. And then it will come back again. All right, there we go. Once again, this is a spacer that's custom for this particular display. You will not have this on your unit. And if it's an ES unit, it will have a piece of metal on the back rather than the plastic that you're seeing here. The reason we have plastic here is because this is an E display that has been modified. Um, there's not going to be another one of those in the world, but the process is entirely similar. All right, once we have that in place with the three screws, then you would go ahead and plug this in here. amount of pressure and moving back and forth and you would go ahead and position the front in place. Um, the one that's catching here is the power and the disk drive. You got to be careful when you're positioning those. The other thing that we catch of course is the reference channel. That's, so you have to kind of move it back and forth and be a little gentle. Once you have it in place you're going to screw everything on. We are not going to screw everything on because we are anxious to test it. We have a dead display, which means we didn't connect something. Let's flex right here. Goes through there. Then goes into that little zip connector. Uh, there we go. And then we close the zip like that. Try that one again. Okay, what do we see? We see the display is twice as bright. It's good enough for most purposes. Clearly better. The other thing we see is that the reference input level is completely off. The reason for that is because we didn't hook on this cable right here. So we're going to just screw that on to make it look normal. And when we do that, voila, everything looks beautiful. That everything is back to normal. And that is how a cheap display fix is done. Thank you for your time. 
Hope you enjoyed.